sports and anime, a combination within the anime manga medium that is still polarizing to this day. On one hand, you got weird kids who do nothing but watch anime all day, thinking they're above watching sports anime, even though they never played any sport. And on the other hand, you got people who play sports but think sports and anime is cringe, exaggerated, and unrealistic with no real value to it since it's fictional. And to be honest, I don't blame you for thinking sports and anime is degenerate when you got degenerate shit like this being masqueraded as sports anime. But to say that it's all purely unrealistic and valueless because it's fictional is just ignorant. A lot of times we learn great and lasting lessons from whatever shonen anime or manga we've seen, so why should sports anime and manga get the bad credit if Dragon Ball Z per se, a bombastic, highly unrealistic battle of shonen anime, is able to leave a lasting impact on its viewers? I believe it's exactly because sports anime manga is fictional, unrealistic, and exaggerated that it's full of value for not just the average viewers, but to athletes too. One of the ways in which Sonin Sports and Manga leaves an everlasting value to its viewers is the way that it drops big life lessons via its matches and its players. Usually there will be the main character and his opponent or rival and they each take a stance on a general theme and whoever comes out on top from their conflict has such a meaningful message for its viewers. That's what normally goes on in Shonen Sports and Manga. But what I find underrated about Shonen Sports and Manga is its exploration of sports psychology. Like I said earlier, because people like to categorize shonen sports and manga as fake and unrealistic, any form of value it could also have is seen as fake and unrealistic, including whatever concepts it wants to explore. Today's example of this is the hottest sports anime manga in a long time, and one of the hottest animes this year, Blue Lock. I'll admit, I was expecting so much more hate for the Blue Lock anime because of how people would be dissing its corny dialoguing and sense of unrealism in the manga, but I'm glad it's getting the love and appreciation right now but I'm still seeing those same criticism about its dialogue and how unrealistic it is. Look, I'm not going to sit here and totally defend Blue Lock's dialogue as if it's the perfect thing, but I personally believe that you can get over it and get used to it very fast once you get to the really hype matches. But to say Blue Lock is a desecration to not only the sports and manga industry, but the sport of football is the corny thing about all of this. Blue Lock is incredibly revolutionary and totally flipped the sports genre on its head. In most team sports anime, the theme of teamwork has been preached and rinsed to death like it's not a team sports anime if the value of teamwork has been drilled in your head almost every episode. And in individual sports anime, integrity, humility, and selflessness are its principal ideas regardless of the sport. Blue Lock looks at this and says, I don't care about no teamwork and humility, I'ma just do me. That itself puts it leagues away from other sports anime manga for how different it is. The way Blue Lock chooses to flip the sports genre on its head is by directly critiquing societal norms in Japan. Blue Lock as a whole is a social critique on Japan's sports culture that can also be found within its work culture. Don't be selfish, one for all, no one is above the team. All of these ideas are repeated in the workforce of Japan which leaves people dissatisfied and sometimes depressed because they're not chasing their ideal goals. The same can be said about Japan's sports culture. Japan in general tends to look down upon brazenness behavior and individual focused decisions, which could be why it doesn't produce aggressive, bold, and fierce athletes as much as other countries. Ego Jinpachi says it's because the Japanese culture lacks a sense of ego that they never won nor would they win a World Cup, and it's why cog-like sports such as baseball is where Japanese athletes excel at. His suggestion to fix this problem is bringing out the player's ego. Now I have a huge distaste for anyone who has a semblance of an ego, but what Jinpachi is telling his players isn't necessarily to be egotistical dickheads, but to take away the hunger for evolution and victory from the athletes with egos and apply it to yourself. According to Jinpachi, this would be in contrast with the state of Japanese football and Japanese sports in general in which players like to stay within the box they were given because it's so much more comfortable than to risk costing your team an entire match because you were bold. The scrutiny they would face if they were to temporarily be selfish might be why they choose to play within the machine they're in as a cog. This is also seen within Japan's workforce, but by tapping into your ego like Jinpachi would say, you see plays you would have never if you continue choosing to play safe. You see opportunities you would have never thought of, and then maybe you score the winning point. Sure you almost risk costing yourself or your team the whole match, but let's say you're successful. The high, the exhilaration, and the satisfaction of winning you feel is incomparable than to just winning by playing safe. And all of that was possible because you chose to act out independently and believe in yourself. Having faith in yourself and desiring victory above all else are key ingredients for you to progress as an athlete. And that is what Blue Lock preaches. There's some one-liners about forgetting about teamwork and being self-centered that I don't agree with, but there are some good takeaways from Ego Jinpachi's philosophy. And the way the concept of ego and the thrill it can give you is shown in Blue Lock is so compelling. 
with all of its exaggerated drawings of monsters coming out of the players and its over-the-top, sometimes edgelord dialogue in which football players tell each other they're going to kill one another and that football is a battlefield, it may all seem corny, but it stays with you because of how off the wall the entirety of the manga is. Another sports psychology Blue Lock explores is flow state, a highly addictive yet hard to achieve state of mind. I could go into the chemical reactions that take place in our brains that induces it, but all you need to know is, flow state is a state of mind in which we get so consumed in doing a task, and the attention we're given it is so sharp and constant, your performance levels are much higher than if you were doing a task casually. Time fades away, and nothing else exists except you and what you're doing in the moment. You can tap into the state by doing virtually anything that requires the slightest bit of concentration and challenge. Gaming, skiing, writing an essay, and even knitting, and in this case, football. For you to tap into the flow state, there's a sweet spot between the level of challenge of the thing you're doing and the level of your ability. If both the difficulty of the challenge and your ability to do the challenge are around the same level, you will enter the flow state. But if the difficulty of the challenge is way above your skill level, you will be too anxious to be productive and confident, which will prevent you from entering the flow state. And if your skill level is too high and the difficulty of the challenge is too low, you'll be too bored and you're going to want to quit doing the challenge because it's not fun enough. But if your skill level equates to the difficulty of the challenge, you're not going to be in a state of anxiety, of boredom, of relaxation, or any of the other state. You're going to be in a state in which you can figure out how to make use of your abilities by reflex because the situation is convenient to your current level. The reason why it's so important to find that sweet spot is because it provides feedback. Feedback is the holy grail of the flow state. In the second selection arc, Isagi teams up with two talented players, Bakira and Nagi, to face off against the three best players in Blue Lock. But the difficulty level of the challenge is too high for even prodigies like Nagi, even more so for Isagi. So he and Nagi move on after not being selected and find themselves in another match. Within this match, the difficulty level of the challenge is decently high because of Baro, another prodigy, but it's balanced out by a mediocre player named Asahi. Because Isagi faces off Asahi, who both agree that they're around the same level and are outclassed by their prodigy teammates, the challenge is to a point where it's not easy at all, but it's not a hopeless situation like the match with Rin. Isagi applies to himself and does what he calls devouring, which means to overcome and adapt yourself in accordance to your opponents to surpass them. Only way he could devour Asahi is by giving himself feedback on what skills he needs against his current challenge, and so he becomes even more skillful, and that is how he and Nagi won that match and selected Baro as their third player. The match was hard enough to pose a challenge, but easy enough to learn and grow from the moment by moment feedback. In the match between Isagi, Nagi, and Baro versus Chigiri, Kunigami, and Ryo, Isagi struggles even more due to a combination of a non-cooperative teammate and a really strong opponent. At first, the situation seemed hopeless, but thanks to the skill he learned from the previous match, which is to use off the ball of movement to coordinate the field better, Isagi uses the previous feedback he learned to lower the difficulty of the challenge to his skill level. The factor known as luck is no mere coincidence. It only comes to those who act from a deep desire. Since you can't understand that, you have no right to exist in the world of battle. The words of Rin Itoshi in chapter 86. When we think of luck, we tend to see it as a random occurrence, something uncontrollable and unpredictable. If a pigeon shits on us while we're walking, we get mad and call it bad luck. But is it really bad luck or is it even just luck at all? Maybe we didn't realize that we had walked under a power line stacked with pigeons, but like Jinpachi says, if you had looked up and seen the pigeons, you would have been more cautious about where you walk and you would have avoided that pigeon shit. Would you then call that good luck? Of course not, you would call that being prepared and aware. So how come when we avoid misfortune, we think it's the result of our awareness, but when misfortune falls upon us, we call it bad luck? It's our egos. Just like Isagi, our egos cannot accept the fact that we are unsuccessful because we didn't have the awareness to see the unseen. In the Isagi vs Rin rematch, Rin scored the last goal to an incredibly heated, tough and close match. In a match where every player was incredibly talented and gave it all their all, the conclusive goal came down to Rin being placed in the right place at the right time. Not Rin using his IQ or his physical talent to outplay, but by placing himself at a random location hoping for the best. Just moments before that, Isagi utterly outplayed everyone including Rin by understanding the flow of the match and knowing Bakira would beat everyone and try to score. Isagi predicted and blocked his shot. In this moment, Isagi surpassed Rin by predicting something he couldn't, but as fortune would have it, Isagi's block fell down to Rin and Rin took advantage of that and scored. Isagi argues that goal was simply due to luck and it's not something tangible. The thing is, Rin saw Isagi run to block Bakira's shot and decided to act upon the one chance that Isagi would block Bakira and the ball would be deflected somewhere near the net. It just so happened that a deflected shot did fall near the net right next to Rin. 
Sure, Rin had to basically gamble on something that could have not happened, but having the awareness to know there's a chance the inevitable could happen and choosing to act upon that chance is what Rin meant by luck only comes to those who act from a deep desire. Only the truest athletes realize that luck isn't something that comes to you, but an opportunity you have to create. You can intend to be in the right place at the right time, even if you just bet on the slim chance that the inevitable could happen. This is how Isagi scored the winning goal in the Blue Lock vs U20 match. In the second selection arc, it was Isagi who created an opportunity for Rin to capitalize on, but in the U20 match, Rin created the opportunity for Isagi to capitalize on. Rin entered his flow state and managed to beat everyone in a one-on-one, -on -one, utterly outplaying his opponents against her strongest ability. And when he came down to Rin versus his brother, Rin managed to keep up with him and intercept him. Rin beat everyone, including Sae, and while no one believed he could do it, only one person had faith in Rin's ability, Isagi. Isagi fully understood what type of player Rin was and put all his faith in him that he would manage to intercept Sae and that the ball would come to him if he placed himself near the goal. So it all came down to luck at the end of the day, but quite clearly, this was Isagi capitalizing and believing in an unseen opportunity because he had enough awareness to realize not only Rin's capabilities, but also how he lost to Rin due to Rin bringing luck to his side in their second match. Isagi replicated the scenario and went on to be the hero of Blue Lock. To quote someone, there is no such thing as luck. Luck is an excuse used by people who weren't good enough to see hidden opportunities and act upon those hidden opportunities. All in all, I think Blue Lock isn't the manga people expect it to be. I remember getting back into Blue Lock thinking it was just going to be a lot of corny one-liners, some badass scenes, and some raw shit going on. But to realize that it's actually a treasure chest for all athletes and not just football players, like I would have never thought of that from Blue Lock. It shattered my expectations easily, and picking it back up is honestly one of the best decisions I've made in recent months. Because of Blue Lock, I got back into football and it made me tune into the World Cup again, which the last time I watched consecutive World Cup matches was like the 2014 World Cup, I think. And it literally just made me buy a football. Like that's just how amazing and immersive the manga is. So yeah, if you made it all the way till the end, appreciate you a lot. Consider liking, subbing, commenting, I'll add, especially commenting. I would love to hear all y'all thoughts on the manga. And also, Isagi after the latest leaks is top three. I don't want to hear nothing about Shido or Nagi or anyone else besides Rin. Because we all know Rin is going to be the second best player of all time by the end of the series. Anyways, bye.